Good grief. Why do they never go in for me? Hello, hello, hello! Yeah, I'm back again with another instalment of my 100 favourite albums. So I do believe today we are doing numbers 85 to 81. Hopefully I'll get them in the right order. Never know. <laughs> right, so here we go. So at number 85, we have... Yes. So we have In It For The mon Money. This absolute gem by Supergrass. So this is Supergrass's second album. And um, I absolutely love this album. It is, so it's a right step up from their first album. It, um, I just think the songs are better. There's less of this happy knockabout aspect of the first album. I don't know. It's maybe more weary of the whole pop star thing i don't know maybe they were just feeling like that but there's a kind of more there's a darker undertone to the whole thing it's still blooming marvelous and it's still um just it's wonderfully bouncy i mean you've got things like in it for the money just kicks it off in a brilliant way you've got richard the third which is just marvelous you've got quite a songs like um uh, late in the day, uh, things like Hollow Little Rain. Um, Going Out is just one of the most underrated singles of that, of Britpop, to be honest. I think it is, it's one of my favourite Britpop era singles, and it came out, when did this come out? Late, was quite late in Britpop, this one, 97. So, wasn't that much longer before it was all kind of falling apart to be honest but this is magical i absolutely adore this one of my favorite Britpop albums um just a word about this copy so this is the limited edition i don't have i'm been playing it but this is a limited edition so you get the second cd with it that was kind of the japanese cover that one um but yeah absolutely love this album even the, even the silly ending uh, sometimes make you sad where they're where they're doing all kinds of percussion with their with their mouths and stuff. But I think they did the last track on Aisha Coco was a bit of a throwaway track. Yeah, but this is just wonderful from start to finish. Absolutely love it. So there we go. So that's eighty five. Supergrass in it for the money. Right, eighty four is I think this is the newest album on the list. I think this is the most recent album absolutely fell in love with her this singer so this is lana del rey and this is born to die this is her first album uh making no apologies i've got most of these today on cd um i absolutely fell for lana del rey's music when i first heard video games i thought it was incredible um i loved the way that she kind of mixed up Kind of had a real retro feeling, but really modern at the same time. Um, maybe her lyrical content wasn't the most varied, but it kind of, I think it came over as a kind of stylistic choice rather than a than a limitation. Um, I mean, nobody slates Mark Bone or some other pop writers for their limited lyrical choice, do they? I just think that was a load of old tap. But I think this is absolutely marvellous. There's so many good songs on here. Um, I think what I like especially about her music is she doesn't just, on the whole, she doesn't write throwaway choruses. I think she writes most of this, or she has a co-writer most of this. Um, they're off, I really like choruses that are long and entwined, that aren't just like, I mean, of course, I love a, co a good shouty um, chorus with about two words in it, but I really love long choruses. And Blue Jeans, I think, is one of the greatest choruses ever written. I absolutely love that song. I think it is an emotional epic, that song. Um, and things like National Anthem, uh, what else is on here? Summertime Sadness. 
off to the races. I think this is marvellous. Um, so at number 85, sorry, at number 84 is uh, Born to Die by Lana Del Rey. That doesn't include the Paradise EP, just the album itself. But there we go. Right, number 80, where are we? Number 83, we've got a vinyl record to show you. And this is one of the first vinyl records. Oh dear, I think I've got to uh, stick it. One of the first vinyl records I probably actually listened to. Probably one of the first albums I listened to. I forget this one. But when I was growing up, so my dad had, I first listened to my dad's stuff. And he had, of, and I've talked before about Diamond Dogs and I've talked before about um, Paul McCartney album, uh, Band on the Run, and other things. But I forgot that there's also this one. I don't know how I forgot this. So at number 83, we've got Roxy Music's um, For Your Pleasure. This is an incredible album. I absolutely loved this growing up. Um, when you think about the stuff that I got off my dad, the Stones, oh yeah, the Stones as well. Stones, Bowie, Band on the Run. I mean, that is a musical education, really. You've got the basics of a sound, sound musical appreciation just there. This was something else again. This is, so Diamond Dogs is weird, but this is, this is off the chart. I mean, it's got a fantastic, I love the cover for a start. So both the inner cover, sorry, the outer cover, which is kind of mysterious. What's she doing there? Why is Byron Ferry doing that? And then you've got the band all playing guitars. I absolutely, I grew up loving that in, the, in a cover. So yeah, so on this you've got, so obviously the, the, the hooky track is Do The Strand, but you've got some absolutely amazing songs, kind of walk reggae on the bogus man, 50s crew walk 50s crooning on Grey Lagoons um, editions of you beauty queen and then you've got in every dream home a heartache which is I mean now that I'm older I am it's an, a, a tale of acute paranoia but when you when you're about 10 and you listen to every dream home a heartache you haven't got a clue what's going on and it just seemed like this really bad dangerous story now i get it now i sort of appreciate it as um sort of when patrick bateman takes a night off <laughs> that's the sort of feeling i get off it now but it's still just as insanely powerful and it's probably one of the best musical orgasms ever recorded um yeah this i had to include this in my hundred just because it it's always been around for me absolutely fantastic record um i prefer it to the first album as well which i now have on c i only have it on cd but this is definitely my favorite roxy album so there we go for your pleasure number 83 right 82 is probably yeah i think this is will it be my favorite album of 84 i think it might be so it's Ocean Rain by Echo and the Bunny Men. This is a baroque pop classic. This is. Um, I don't know whether I don't know whether it was him and Cope vying for that Scott Walker esque baroque pop. I don't know what it. I don't know whether they were sort of rubbing off on each other. But this is magical. Um, so this was recorded in England and in Paris. Now in Paris they used a thirty-five piece orchestra to actually record the songs. And this is a wonderful album. I mean, it gives me a chance to, to say that I actually saw it. The, first, the only time I ever saw Echo and the Bunnymen live, well, live, was actually when I went into the Top of the Pop studio in 1984 and saw them doing The Killing Moon. Um, and that song is definitely one of my favorite ever songs. And that song's on here. It's an absolutely wonderful romantic, romantic-esque, I don't know, epic, epic song. But then you've got things like Crystal Days, The Yo-Yo Man, Thorn of Crowns, 
Ocean Rain Silver and the, and the Seven Seas. What a beautiful song. Really should have been even bigger than Killing Moon, probably. I mean, the Killing Moon should have been number one forever. But the Seven Seas should have been. It's such a classic pop single. Um, Ian McCulloch, absolutely wonderful vocals on here. I think this kind of almost tore the band apart because it took them forever to re to follow this up, like three years or something. And even then, it was kind of. Mm. But this is this is an absolute classic album and one of the best indie records of the eighties. Absolutely superb stuff. So maybe one day I will find this on vinyl. I keep trying to find this one. This is one of the ones I want on vinyl. But blooming marvellous. Right, eighty one. We have a sultry. Mid nineties classic. Mid nineties was this ninety five? I think so. So we've got PJ Harvey with "To Bring You My Love." This is when she really grew up. Oh my word! So on the previous albums, they were good. They were really good, sort of um, indie, thrashy. But here you've got a complete change of pace. There's brooding sultriness. There's, I mean, I think she just embraced her sexuality on this album um like things like to bring you my love there's there's uh desperation there's um terror even on some of the tracks things like um long um meets a monster uh there's long snake moan is absolutely brilliant um, send his love to me just that aching desire I think that yeah so that's what this album is all about desire it's full of desire um, and this is when I think she actually she absolutely stepped to other level just fantastic now, PJ Harvey's a fantastic artist overall but this is my favourite album by her so there we go at 81 is that right yeah 81 uh, To Bring You My Love by PJ Harvey right there you go that's the next batch of five albums. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to do the, the continue this series very quickly. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.